à la fois On s'aime, on se dit tout Cet amour est si doux Deux à la fois On se sent bien partout C'est parce qu'on se dit nous Pour toi Je donnerai tout de moi Je sais que tu y crois si c'est comme ça l'amour, j'en veux partout autour, autour de moi, autour de nous, et qu'il n'en finisse pas d'être le cours des jours. Calimera, and today our special guest is an international singer whose warm and beautiful voice has captured the attention of audiences all over the world. We are very happy to have with us the beloved Greek-French singer, George Perrys. He's here today to talk to us about the launch of his first English language debut album, Picture This. Good morning, George. Good morning. Good welcome. morning, Yana. Welcome to the United States and Thank welcome you. to Calimera USA here on New Greek TV. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're big fans. Oh, thank you. You have fans all over the world. The Greek Americans <laughs> also have been following you. Uh, you were born and raised in Athens, and we want to hear everything about how George Perry's grew up and how he ended up becoming this international star. <laughs> he grew up, because it's a he. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a very weird way because my mom is French and my father is Greek. So even though I was born and raised in Greece, Every, from morning till noon, everything was in Greek. Greek school, Greek friends, everything was in Greek. And then as soon as I went back home, everything turned upside down and everything was in French. <laughs> so French music, French TV, French books, French cuisine, everything, you know, was... So I, I, uh, I was had raised a in a... privileged life. Yes, and I was raised in a, in a double way, if you want. So Two worlds. Yes. Yes. The Greek and the French culture, which is very similar, I must say. Yes, that is true. We both like to complain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure that's not it, all of it. But uh, uh, cultured, wonderful people, very warm. And uh, you grew up uh, uh, singing from the age of four. When I was four, yes, I decided that I wanted to be a, uh, a singer. And um, I went uh, and saw my mom and I told her, you know what? One day, I'm going to be a singer. In Greek or French? And in French. <laughs> I, I was only allowed to speak Mama? in French. Maman. Maman. <laughs> and uh, her reaction was, yeah, yeah, go and, you know, tidy okay. up your room now and we'll <laughs> discuss about this later. But she was Ten very... Ten years uh, later, we'll talk about She it. was very wise, though, you know, because she, uh, she brought me to uh, a music school the next day, actually. And I started learning the piano. So she never, you know, told me, you can't do this or you cannot be a singer. Uh, she was very respectful of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Also, I think because um, she realized, especially as I was going through uh, puberty, that, you know, um, there was no other option for me. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I could think of. It's a uh, <laughs> karma, maybe, you know, that's what they say, that it chooses you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it did choose you. You have a fabulous voice and you've Thank had you the so privilege much. of working with many wonderful people. Uh, you are an idol pop uh, star and uh, your first solo uh, album was uh, My New Day. Kenuria Mumera, yes. Tell me about that. That was an album uh, I released when I was 22 years old, uh, composed by Stefanos Korkolis, who, who is, uh, is a wonderful music composer, yes, very yes. underrated for those of you who don't know. Uh, Stefanos Krokulis is a fabulous uh, uh, music composer, not only singer. And he's also uh, an amazing pianist. Amazing, with an incredible amazing pianist, yes. uh, dexterity that very few people have. Yes. Uh, he's extremely talented. And um, he composed uh, almost, uh, he composed half of the album, and the other half was composed by uh, Mimis Plesas. Um, who now, is who, didn't Mimis Plesas discover you? Yes. Okay. And it actually happened in a very funny way. I'll tell you a little story about it. When I was uh, right before my 18th birthday, uh, a common friend we had uh, called him up and said, Mimis, I'd like, you, I'd like to introduce you uh, to this young kid. He's a singer and I think he's good. And the answer was, Tell that kid that he's very happy because today, he's very lucky, sorry, because today is the last day in my life that I'm hosting an audition for young artists. Oh my God. And I was sent to his house right away. Uh, and that's where he heard me. Uh, Mentored he, you? 
Yes, he told me a few words that I will never forget. And uh, I was actually on tour with him. Three days later, we started performing together and oh we did more God. than 40, 50 concerts together around Greece and Cyprus. And yes. uh, he was a real mentor. You've been very fortunate. You've worked with a lot of wonderful people. Would you like to mention some other artists that you've worked with? And recently, of course, not recently, rather, in Athens, you were at the Arena. You were part of the Arena International Music Festival. Yes. Uh, which was... I was invited by a, another great friend of mine, um, someone who has supported me a lot, especially in my earlier days, but he still is a very good friend. It's Mario Frangoulis. Uh, which and, we adore, uh, adore Mario <laughs> Frangoulis. Well, he's a great, great singer. He's, uh, and apart from that, and apart from the fact that he's an enormous artist, he is an incredible human being. Uh, he's a very generous um, person and he's someone who has supported me a lot so in 2008 he invited me he did a series of concerts at the Athens Arena where he invited um, many of his international friends they all came to Athens and they sang with him so he gave me the chance to be on stage with Lucio Dalla with Justin Hayward from the Moody Blues with Madeleine Peru and of course with one of my idols um, Lara Fabian mm -hmm. and uh, the French yes fabulous the singer Yes, and that's how it all started little by little, um, my journey outside of Greece as well. Well, you are also a, a warm, wonderful soul, just like Mario Frangoulis is, and very, very, very talented. And uh, I want to know about who influenced you in your youth, and who did you kind of have as an idol? Um, who did you want to be? It's, it was actually three women, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of rare for a boy. Mm -hmm. um, my first idol was Nana Muskuri, Nana Muskuri, the great the Greek. Nana Muskuri, the great. Yes, yes, the great Greek singer who, as you may know, she's the best-selling female artist of all times. Of all times. Uh, and um, I always looked up to her because, apart from the phenomenal voice that she had, I always admired the fact that you know she left Greece and managed to become who she became and, and, and live this life and this international career across the world. I thought it was just incredible and phenomenal. So she was my first idol. Was that your dream as well? You wanted to become an international star? Yes, my dream has always been to, to, to travel and uh, from country to country and to sing from, from language to language. Partly also because I was half Greek, half French, so I have both cultures in me. So it was kind of, uh, it was evident that I was uh, that I wanted to do that. The other two idols. The other two were Maria Callas. Uh, the great. The great. You the have legendary. mentioned only great people today. <laughs> yes. Well, we're Greeks. We have. These to... are the bright people to, to 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 look up to. So Maria Callas was my other idol. When I was 12 years old, I I uh, discovered her by chance listening to um, a CD that was given to me, and I was mesmerized by the character and and the strength and the personality. The personality of this woman. And then a little bit later in my teens, I uh, found, um, I, I discovered Lara Fabian, uh, or Lara Fabian, as they call her here, who was, by the way, performing at Carnegie Hall a few... Just recently, uh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. 10 days ago. And um, I loved Lara because she, at the time, was a 26-year-old woman who, um, you know, who had a huge success, and she had the strength and the, and the courage to be um, who she wanted to be. She wrote her own songs uh, and she went against uh, the tides, if you want. She, she Of who they wanted her to yes, be. She exactly. became who she wanted to become. Exactly. Are you becoming who you want to become? I think so. Uh, it took me a little time to realize what I wanted to be. I mean, I always knew I wanted to be a singer. It's just that when you're very young and you're at the beginning of your career, you, you're under a lot of pressure from the people in the industry or the people around you who... Um, have a vision of what they, they want you to become, but that's not necessarily who you are. So um, It always works that way, and you have to ha be able, there's very few artists that, that just you know strike back and say, hey, this isn't really me. Exactly. You have to be strong and you have to be very patient because you know when you're 20 or 21 or 22, you, all you want to do is do an album and be out there and go to TV shows and radio um, interviews and everything. Get it out there. Exactly. But then you have to realize that is this what I want to do or not? Because you can be a little bit patient and the right thing will come a little uh, later. And I can't complain. You cannot <laughs> complain. You've been very successful. Your second album, uh, Perno Anasa. Mm -hmm. 
uh, was also very, very popular. Uh, tell me, uh, it was a little more personal. It was because it was the first time that I uh, dared to uh, sing my own songs, the songs that I had written, because mm -hmm. uh, my first record was, like we said, composed by Corcolis and Plesa. So this time I wanted it to be different um, and I wanted to put out there what I had in my, in my soul. So yes, it was a very different album. And I had a beautiful duet with Mario mm -hmm. Frangoulis on that record, which was called Stizgisti Nakri. Uh, I wanted to ask you something before we move on to what you're doing today. Um, do you prefer singing Greek, French, or English? <laughs> what do you feel more comfortable in? Um, the truth is that I'm messed up. <laughs> <laughs> you're no, you're confused. You don't know which... But well, what comes more natural to you? Is it Greek or is it, is it French? All of them are equally natural to me. Um, you feel every yes, word. I, I, I dream in English, I count in French, <laughs> I swear in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect combination, you got the best of all three. <laughs> so, you know, I can't, uh, I can't make the distinguish between the three. Um, you know, I love all three languages. Of course, my French and my Greek are better than my English because I learned English much, much later in my life. But um, you're not translating as if you know. You're not thinking in Greek to translate to English. You just, no. you're just, you're. No. It's automatic for you now. Yes, it is. It is. And I've spent a lot of time in the States now, so yes, you know, you I have. You have to. You have to. You have to. But it's. Um, I enjoy singing in all languages. Uh, it's a real pleasure. It's a gift. And now I want to go back to your idols. I want to know, other than all the, these wonderful three uh, lovely ladies, wasn't there any other artists that inspired oh, yeah, you in some sure. way you listened to? Yes. Many, many people. Um, for sure, Sting was a great uh, influence in my life, and Freddie Mercury. I used to spend hours watching his videos and then, because you know he was a, a, a very particular stage animal yes he had this energy that very few people in the history of music yes. had so perfect for he, broadway he was yes. doing musicals instead of concerts that's yes. what i he, feel when he, i watch him. he was a real showman and he gave it all he mm -hmm. gave it all on stage and apart from that he had a voice that was he had the voice of a, of a classically trained singer mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons i also study my voice every single day religiously and i i keep doing my uh, my uh, vocal lessons and everything because you know it's it's very important it's a muscle you have to keep it um in shape <laughs> what is george perry's regimen what is a, a singer's regimen of you know well i can tell life. you my what is your life comprised? my regimen uh it depends uh, if i'm on tour i will wake up early in the morning uh eight or nine o'clock um, I will not speak for the first hour so that the, the vocal cords can, you know, wake up on their own. Uh, then I will have to uh, take some breakfast, uh, have some breakfast, and uh, I'll do my emails because, you know, nowadays that's all you do. You're that's stuck in front of your know. computer that's, that's for hours. hours. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, time, but and then at about 11 or 12, I'll start doing uh, some exercises, some vocalizing. I will always... Every day? Every day. So every day you are training your voice? Yes. The way we train our Six bodies. days a week. I'm, I'm supposed... My teacher says I have to leave one day... For rest. Uh, yes, exactly. I have to rest and not think of my voice at all. Uh, but when I'm a con on con in concert, um, I'll always have pasta at noon because the, the carbohydrates give you energy for a longer period of time. And then, you know, little by little, you, you go to the theater, you start doing the sound check. And then you go back to your dressing room and you, you, I have to do some vocalizing again to warm up for the second time. And then... How long is the warm-up? How, ma how many hours is the warm-up? Oh, no, it's very short. It's 20 minutes. Oh, okay. That's it, 20, okay. 30 minutes, not more than that. Because mm -hmm. then you got to give it all on stage. <laughs> how did you feel the first time you were in front of a stage, an audience? Oh. Do you remember that experience? Terrified. Uh, it was actually in Athens. It was the first concert I did with Mimis Blesas. Mm -hmm. It was, oh, were it was nervous? The, oh my God, my legs were shaking, my <laughs> knees were trembling. Did um, you get over it right away when you opened your mouth? No, actually I didn't. <laughs> Come on, I, I that think that I didn't get over it until days afterwards. <laughs> um, you know, through the years now, I've managed to to control my anxiety and my because I, I used to be a nervous wreck every time I had a concert. Throughout the day, mm -hmm. I was a nervous wreck. What what what? What are you afraid of? I don't know. It's facing all these people. Um, it's uh, 
the fear of the unknown, I guess, and you don't want to let these people down because they came to see you and they, they love you, they support you, uh, and you mean something to them, and your music speaks to their to their souls. So if you're not up to the standards, or up to your standards... Um, I think that's what it is. You, you're your hardest critic. I think it's, it's a little bit of both, because you know what people expect from you, and you want to give it to them, and you want to give even even more than what they expect from you. Mm -hmm. So um, that puts a lot of pressure <laughs> and it makes you, you know, um, scared to put it mildly. Yeah. And, um, and But then, you're not scared anymore. I am. <laughs> Are you? I am. And it oh, also no, don't depends tell, on... Don't, don't, he's lying, he's lying. <laughs> no. And it also depends on the venue. I mean, last year, um, Mario actually invited me to do uh, the Herod Atticus Theatre with him, Toy Rodeo. What a privilege. Which was, you what know, a beautiful theater. of course, and it was my dream Ancient theater. To, to, to set foot on that stage. And I was so nervous. You know, the dressing rooms are... Um, uh, are downstairs, exactly. correct? Exactly. And I was so nervous that I, I just couldn't climb up the stairs. Uh, so my, my assistant came and picked me up and she dragged me all the way up. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I changed my mind. <laughs> She's like, yo, you listen to me. You go up there and stop it. <laughs> so she dragged me up there. It was very funny. Um, but, but we're not you know, having these experiences anymore, are we? <laughs> um, no, unless it's a very, very important uh, concert. Like uh, a few days ago at Lincoln Center, I was a little... Uh, well, quite nervous. I highly doubt it. You did not seem nervous at all, by the way, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He had a fabulous performance at the Allen Room, uh, the magical Allen Room at Jazz Lincoln Center. Yes. Um, uh, that was a fabulous performance. And you worked with a lot of wonderful people on this project. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, what we did was uh, we launched my new album, my new English album, that will be released here in America and Canada and then in a few markets around the world. Uh, in the spring. Picture this. Picture this. And I That's love what this. It's this called. is a great title. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so during the concert, we presented the album, and I also did um, a song in Greek and a few in French. Um, and the concert was filmed because it's going to be broadcast on TV throughout the year mm -hmm. and released on DVD uh, a little bit later. Um, so it was a very important event. I'm very happy uh, it all went well. It did. So, We're very um, proud of you. You had a great turnout. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm a huge fan and you oh, will be too. You. If you do not know who George Paris is, please look him up. Mm -hmm. Buy his wonderful, wonderful music. Uh, picture this, his latest album just released January 2014. Uh, George, uh, I want I want to ask you a question. What song make brings tears to your eyes that you sing? Is there a song that moves you? Many many songs move me. Um, the one I can think uh, right now is a song that I don't sing anymore, for the same reason that you asked me because I get too emo emotional when I sing it, and it's a song called Harti Noto mm -hmm. uh, It's a Greek song by Manos Hadzidakis that Nana Muskuri sang. Many, many, many years Why ago. Why does it make you so emotional? Because... Um, what does it remind you of? It takes me back to my childhood, which was not very easy. It was a very difficult childhood because my parents divorced when I was very young and it was a very violent and difficult divorce. So um, I remember listening to this song, which says, Αν με πίστευες λιγάκι, θα σαν όλα If you If you could believe in me, anything could be possible. Um, and at that time, that's when I realized I wanted to sing and that's when I realized that I would have to believe uh, in me to become who I wanted to become. So it's a song that still brings tears to my eyes whenever I, uh, whenever I hear it and whenever I sing it. All great artists have pain. <laughs> yes. Pain, passion, it's all the same. It's life. Yes, it's life. It's and that's life. beautiful. And you bring a lot of emotions to people through your music. And we're yeah. very, very happy uh, to have you here. And we're very proud that you're Greek as well as French, of course. Thank you and so much. And that you have expanded to the to United States. Thank Would you. you like to tell us a little bit about what's going on with the youth and the new, the, the, the new artists in Greece? How do you see their future? What's going on with the situation in Greece? I think that... Um, there, there are many, many great new artists coming out in Greece. There's a newer generation of artists. Um, there's no point in naming names. Um, I'm sure you know them, like Natasha Bofilio or Nora Zuganelli. And uh, there's a few people who are very, very talented. And they bring a new uh, wave 
of artistry in, 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 in the music of the country, uh, of course things are not easy anymore. They're not how they used to be because a record label will not pay for the production of an album anymore. So when you're young, you have to find a way of doing this on your own. Mm -hmm. So it makes things much more difficult, even though you know you have the internet that can help you. Mm -hmm. um, I was very fortunate to be one of these last artists, young artists, um, who was supported by the system. Um, but I'm very optimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. And I think that out of this whole financial and social crisis and political crisis, I am sure that many, many uh, good things will come out of that. And, uh, you know, we, the Greeks, we're very, uh, we're proud people. We're smart when we want to. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when we're under pressure, finally we start supporting each other. And, we are uh, resilient. I think yes. the Greeks are resilient. Yes. And, uh, and that's what's happening right now. I think we're starting to support each other, help each other, and realize that, you know, it's up to us yeah. to, uh, to, 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 to be winners out of all this. Well, you're a great example. George Perry's, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave you off with two wonderful videos and, and two beautiful songs. George, thank you so much, and we will be following you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting career. me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Τρίτο στεφάνι, καρδιά μου τι να σε κεράσω Που δεν με πιάνει, λίγα κι ο ύπνος να ξεχάσω Σαν παραμύθι, γιαγιά εκάβη μάνα νίνα Φωτιά στα στήθη, κόκκινη μοίρα σερπαντίνα Χαμένα, χαμένα Τα πιο πολλά κορμιά κουρασμένα Κορμιά δειλά που πήγαν, που φύγαν Το συγνωστή στις νύχτα στο χώρο έχουν κιάστη Το πρώτο στεφάνι βαθιά πληγή Το δεύτερο φτάνει σε άλλη γη Το τρίτο στεφάνι μια συντροφιά Που ζήσαμε αυτήν η ομορφιά On the island of Antiparos, at the heart of the Aegean, Gaia produced an exquisite organic olive oil in limited edition, which traveled all the way to the US. The sales of Antiparos olive oil will finance 10 new and innovative Greek companies to grow. Buy today your bottle in reinspiregreece.com and support the Greek youth to move forward. Ολοκένουριο κατάστημα στην καρδιά της Αστόριας. Τσακίρις Μαλάς. Τα καλύτερα και τα πιο μοντέρνα υποδήματα άριστης ποιότητας από Ελλάδα, Ιταλία και Ισπανία. Το κατάστημα που εξυπηρετεί κάθε ανάγκη της σύγχρονης γυναίκας και του άντρα. Τσακίρις Μαλάς. 3143 Steinway Street, Αστόρια. Καθώς επίσης στο 7111 Austin Street, Forest Hills και 1206 Kings Highway, Brooklyn. Joining us today is Greek-American fashion expert Christos Garkinos, known as the Robin Hood of fashion. Christos Garkinos has been featured by Japanese Vogue as one of the most fashionable men in the world. He's also been seen in the pages of Elle, Vanity Fair, Glamour, Los Angeles Magazine, Angelino, and of course, Vogue. Christos, welcome to our studio. Alimera. How good are you? I'm great. I'm very good, actually. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited. Uh, we're excited. You're gorgeous. You dress so well. You walked in. Everybody was like, oh, who is that man? Uh, I just, you know, I, I have to take my father because, like, I, I'm definitely I'm his his son. So thank you for that. But you know, it's all my Greek genes. Yeah, you know? blue eyes. By the way, guys, you can't see his height. He's like six foot five, he's, <laughs> and he's just so so sharply dressed. Uh, and that's what you're famous for. Yes, I mean, I, I've always loved fashion my whole life, and um, I've been lucky enough to parlay it into an amazing career that's let me open up one of the most amazing stores in the world called Decades, and um, where I deal with vintage uh, couture, and uh, it's got me a show. I had a show on Bravo television and now I have a clothing line coming out so I'm the, I'm a very big Greek in terms of entrepreneurship and really making it out there and I, it's due to my parents they're entrepreneurs the whole oh my lives. God, you've done so much yeah. we're so proud of you Thank representing you. Greeks yes. on American all the television time. all and the time you are just such a supporter of so many things but I'd like to start off with your background yes so because you were telling me all these great stories about your family yeah tell us about your background as a Greek growing up in Detroit well um, you know I grew up in a hundred percent Greek family in fact my my grandmother had a stipulation in her will. The first one who married a non-Greek got cut out of the will. 
That's just so the, Greek. Just the first one. And then it was over. My, so my cousin married an Italian, so it was done. She's out. I'm uh, done. So basically, um, so my parents were born in Greece. My mother was from Rhodes, from Rhodes, and my dad was from Kalamata. And uh, they uh, immigrated when they were 12 and 16, respectively, to Detroit, where I'm from. And uh, they met a church, our bowling, one of the two, the church bowling links. They loved to bowl. And, both uh, Greek things. Both Greek things, right? Yeah. And they married in the late 50s, and then they had me and my sister, and we uh, lived above my Yaya and Bapu uh, in a duplex in Detroit. My Nuna and Nuna were down the street, my Thea and Mathia were down the street. So it was very Greek. It was very... Great family. It, I love it. I mean, in Detroit has, obviously, you know, a huge Greek community. It's huge. And I was an altar boy for 13 years, and of course, we had a restaurant. Um, so, That's you know, amazing. I know, it's right? a Greek story. Totally, a restaurant. We had a restaurant for 30 years. It was called Meat Town Inn. My dad was the <laughs> That's cook. That's not a Greek name, but we like it. I know. It was, it, it, he had good food. My, uh, my dad was the cook. My mother was out front. I was the cashier. And <laughs> then I'd go to sleep underneath the uh, counter as my mother would type out the lunch menu. And I would hear the tap, tap, tap. And then I would wake up. That was my alarm to wake up for lunch, honestly, oh. Aditya. And um, so then, uh, you know, he would yell in the back. They would yell in the front. And... He, he just loved it. And I love the whole camaraderie. of That's why I love retail so much. I love the rush you get. And every day you don't know what's going to happen. And, right. you know, I'm really understanding people. So we had the restaurant for 30 years. I, um, my church moved from Detroit to Gross Point. So all of us moved out with to Gross Point with the church. Because, you know, the church was so important to us. Oh, we had yes. every, you know, and I was vice president of Goya. Oh, when that's I was, his name. I know. So my, mo my grandmother, who I love, and she lived until she was 95, when I was running for vice president of Goya, I don't know if it makes any sense <laughs> at all, but she, you know, when you were sick as a child, she would make, uh, she'd do the alati, she'd like, put uh, warm water with oil inside and, and do like the thing on your forehead, like just to feel better. Right. And then she would then say, <laughs> if you were feeling sick or if you were out for something big, she would do that. Then she'd tell us to run or direct direct it around the table three times <laughs> so we could ward off all evil spirits or give us luck. So I hear, I'm, I think about it now, I'm like, what was I doing again with my grandma? Like, you know, so. You, these are the things you remember. I told her, every, and every Friday she'd go with, a, um, you know, with an in, incense to each room and bless each room. Yes. She'd make yogurt before it was, you know, Greek yogurt, yes. like by hand. Yes. You know, so it was just all that. So, I mean, I, and so I really feel, I've always been um, very connected to my Greek community and I, and I, and I love them all. And I have a big, huge Greek uh, Easter every year at my house. Like 45 people come. And Wonderful. So, anyway, I mean, so I love it. And that's what makes you so special, right. too. Your background, you know, this wonderful uh, love from home and traditional, right. our culture. And it's important that people do understand that it is the Greek community and our church that has kept the Greeks together and Hellenism alive amongst the new generation of Greeks. Yeah, I mean, I was a son of Pericles. I... You know, my sister was a maid of Athena. My, my mother was a daughter what of Penelope. What position did you play? Uh, oh, I, I, well, Center? No, 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 that was just for the, the group. But I was a basketball player. I played forward. I was, here's the thing. I wasn't that great, but I had the best headband. <laughs> <laughs> so I, could I want that video. <laughs> I want those pictures. It was like, like that. So, um, because the Serbians were the worst. So they're, they're running towards you like they're so big, those Serbians. They're like, oh, God, the Serbians. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the Greeks, though, the, the Greeks, right? We had to, we had to do it. So, um, you yeah, and I, I, I love, and I love, Spartan. I support all my Greek friends. Like, a good friend of mine is Debbie Mantinopoulos, uh, who I'm sure you've she's met. She's lovely, yes. And she's a her. cookbook coming out soon, yeah. and she's a good friend of mine. And and I meet Greeks, and like Hannah Simone, who's on New Girl, she's um, Cypriot, so uh, we hang out. So I'm really just That's awesome. Would love to do that. So, so how did you uh, leave Detroit? You ended up in L. A. Yeah. You you have a one of the best or most famous vintage uh, consignment shops in yeah. LA. And tell us about that transition of your life. Well, the, you know, I went to school at Michigan um, and, uh, and I graduated with a degree in uh, business in French. I actually speak French too. Mm. Um, and so uh, I remember the day where I had two job offers in Chicago and San Francisco because, you know, it's hard to leave my family. And I sat my parents down and I said, you know, here's the choice. Like, what do I should do? This one, this much money, that much money. Of course, my dad's like, "What's more? What, what will make Go you more money?" Go where the money is. So I moved to I moved to I moved to California. Yeah. So that really got me there, and um, I, you know, was able to kind of start my career. But it was a very conservative business. I, but I showed up like in the first day with like a briefcase and a three-piece suit, and they're like, "You're too fashionable for." You have to go home and change. Are you serious? Yeah, so that really so was. What type of business were you? It was, I was a brand manager on at the Clorox company. Are you serious? And my first brand was Kingsford Charcoal. So I learned how to um, barbecue. I could barbecue with beer, hickory chips. I know everything about barbecuing. And it was a big job. It was all these Harvard MBAs around me, and I was just an undergrad. And, but you know, on the weekends, I go up. You had talent. Talent. You saw and I, but, that? I, but I felt I wanted to be in something a little more uh, creative. I just felt it was part of me. But you know, my parents were like, go to business school. Get a job, so I was listening. I would listen to them, 
So I went from there to, um, uh, I actually got into Harvard, and then uh, I didn't go because Disney offered me a job in LA, and I've always wanted to work for Disney, and I was there during the heyday of Disney, and then they sent me to Europe uh, to open up all the Disney stores in Europe. And it was actually a, a great time because my dad passed away right when that was happening, I went to Europe, and my mom and sister came out, and um, you know, I, I opened up the Disney store on the Champs-Élysées, oh, and fantastic. it was a great moment with Mickey and Minnie and fireworks, and I remember seeing my mom and sister just, my dad just died, and was just crying, and so this moment, I knew he would have loved to be yeah. been there for it. So, and then I um, stayed there for a few years, and then Richard Branson, the famous businessman, uh, and another hero of mine asked me to come back to L.A. to open up all the Virgin Mega stores. So and impressive. I love music. You know, when I was growing up, we listened to the Trio Bel Canto. And my, I, that somehow got me to start dusting or vacuuming. <laughs> She'd put on that music, my mother, and we just would start. And she still has the same stereo player. <laughs> and we would just, didn't she like grow up like yes. to Greek music on Saturdays and you had to clean? So yeah. we did all that. Um, and so and then I uh, started this business while I was still in music because uh, I wanted to be in fashion. And. Uh, it turned out like, you know, we started with 50 consigners, and a consigner is someone who allows me to go through their things and consign their pieces for them and then resell them. Mm -hmm. So it's gotten big. We started with 50 people, and now I have over 4,000 people around the world in my, oh my. My, my Rolodex, so that's, you know, use it anymore. Amazing. And so it's called the Robin Hood of Fashion because I, I take from the 1% of people who give Chanel rich, right? really rich, and I sell to everybody else at a much lower price. Good for you. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I basically am doing fashion's good work. Yeah, good for <laughs> but, you. Yeah. But I got to go back and do, I do trunk shows around the country. I go to Detroit. And, you know, growing up, I was obviously born Christos. Um, but I went by Chris because no one could say my name in American school. Right. So I went to college, 18, I went to Paris, I came back and, you know, I, by the way, now I'm Christos 100%, don't call 100% me Chris. 100% Christos, not Chris, I still no go more. Back, you know, so I go back to Detroit where all the Greeks are and they still call me Chris. So I went back for my trunk show and, and they would call me Chris and the back of my head would just go like this. <laughs> I said, it's going to be 10% more for you <laughs> if you call me Chris. If you don't call me Christos. Okay, then it's, that's good. We'll give you the Greek discount. That's so, so funny. Anyways. What a fascinating story. Very been, impressive. Yeah. You've worked for some wonderful people. Yes. And then you got involved with uh, television. Television, yes. So tell me about your experience working with the Dukes of Melrose. Yes, yeah, so I, um, I, and this is back to my father again. My father really wanted to, um, he was, he did a little background work in the movies in Greece before he came over, and um, and he was always interested in film, and, I, and we would watch movies on Sunday all the time together, and so I think he always wanted to kind of be in front of the camera, and I felt very natural in front of it because I was, um, I had a marketing for Disney and Virgin, I'd be all the, I'd be the face of everybody and I met everybody, and uh, so they can't, the whole reality show explosion. If you're in LA and don't have a reality show, you don't matter anymore. Everybody has a reality show, and I was oh like, God. it's gonna be our time at some point, because you know, people love our, our store. So Bravo came to us and said, will you do this show? And I said, you know, I think it'd be great for me and the brand and you know, to expose people more to what I do. And it was, I had a great time doing it. I got to like be really super Greek. I, they covered my Greek Easter, my mother doing shots of Uzo, doing the Tempico, and like just it. being crazy, and Aww. throwing the Ropitas on my mom, my sister, my, and I, and all that stuff. But, it got me um, to where I wanted to be today. Like I, it got me exposed to uh, my new deal with the Home Shopping Network, or, network or HSN. Uh, when I was 22 years old, the first thing I ever bought with my first credit card were pillows from the Home Shopping Network. Alethea, I'm not lying. And I. And now you're gonna be on, on HSN. It. So you don't understand. And I, I, See, it's I always a dream. Forever. Just put that, yeah. that dream in your head. And it I agree. Happens. And I tell kids all the time. I like, I people would ask me as I had these big jobs, like, what, what would like be the cherry on the top of your career? I said, I can tell you right now, taking my first phone call on HSN or Home Shop, because I, I like to be able. To, I think it's part of being Greek. I like being able to connect with people and tell stories. I mean, we're Greek. Greeks are known for Absolutely. telling stories. I'm in the storytelling business. I never tell people I'm in retail. I tell stories about the clothes I find, and you know, and from celebrities or whatever it is. And I and I and you know, people love hearing that. So it's not. A, I'm not a salesperson. I'm a storyteller. Yeah. You know. You're actually a very real person, and I yeah. think that that's you bring out a lot of you know. You got a great personality. You oh. offer a lot. And tell me a little bit about what this new line is. So you've gotten you've gotten new line. It launches very soon on March 20th on the Home Shopping Network, or HSN, and it's called Eureka, obviously a Greek word by Christos Garkinos. And Eureka, it's called that because whenever I find something I love in someone's closet, I don't say it out loud. Eureka, like, okay, I found it. So, so I was like, do you want this? I'm like, I don't know, it's okay. We'll think about, think about it, about, I'll tell you later. Yeah, maybe I'll find the girl for it. Why don't you give it to me? So, I'll, and I, so I've seen over a million pieces of clothing and accessories in my life. I've only taken in maybe 20, 200,000 to sell. And so I'm very picky, but the clothes were size zero to eight, and it's just one. And you know, I come from a family where the girls are real sizes. My sister is like, you know, a real size. My mom is, and all the women I grew up with. And I, 
And, to have, and my mom and sister have the, have the most amazing handbag collection in the world because it comes from me. Right. But I, the clothes I couldn't like find for them. So in my head, I wanted to develop a line where, you know, my mom, my sister, and like real size women real in the world. Real sizes for real women. women yeah. Could have a taste of what I've seen over the years. And the silhouettes, I think, would be great on them. Good for and that's you. where it came from. So, so why don't, uh, give us some tips for our Greek women watching, Greek American, Greek women, everybody right. watching. Um, what do you recommend for, let's just say, um, a very voluptuous woman? Show your best you know. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't like it when women who wear long sweaters and try to like, you know, cover up the whole thing. Cover up half if you want. A crop jacket is great because it shows the narrowest part of your, um, of, your, of your body and allows it to kind of give you a nice, beautiful. Sophia Loren is, for me, I know she's, and Maria Callas, the two women I love. And actually, the, the line really is inspired. The first piece of my line is a peasant blouse, this gorgeous peasant blouse that, you know, that I saw. Um, my parents asked me on my 15th birthday, it's a true story, what do you want to do for your birthday? I'm like, oh, well, Sophia Loren's going to be at the mall and she's signing her perfume and I'd like to go meet her. So my parents looked at me like, who's this guy? Like, <laughs> so I went and um, she walked past me and she had a peasant blouse on, the big sunglasses, yeah. and her wig was, you know, her wig was always off a little bit, but she was walking past me and I was on a chair and I said, Sophia, it's my birthday. And I saw her in this beautiful peasant blouse and will you wave to me? And she started to wave me. I got so excited I fell off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so cut to 30 years later, um, I have my Sophia peasant blouse that's in there. You can make it with an OB belt. And, you know, you can, if you're, you know, a larger size, you can use a belt to kind of give yourself a waist when something's a little more, you know. I just don't want people to, I don't want people to cover up their, their beauty. I mean, not that I think Kim Kardashian's a fashion icon, but, you know, she's got a butt and she shows it off. I think that women should have that. If you've got, you know, my sister's like, you know, her, her girls are up here. I'm like, we'll make the, we'll show the girls off because this here, this part of a woman's body, you should, it, you should also feel like it's an accessory. There's nothing, I think, sexier than a woman's shoulder mm -hmm. or clavicle or, you know, I'm seeing her decolletage Does it here. minimize when you, when, uh, for women Because your eye goes here, right does here. Does it minimize so, yeah. if you wear a, a V instead of a, a turtleneck? I example? would totally wear a V over a turtleneck because yeah. it gives your eye, the eye to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And people, whether you're, if you're dressing for a woman, you know, you're dressing more fashionable. If you're dressing for a man, you're dressing more sexy. It's like, you have to decide, like, right, what you right, want right, to do, right, you know? Right. And so, um... So I can't wait to go like really talk about these tips like you know That's to my, my friends and family and stuff. Tell me about I mean since you go into all these closets and into all this vintage stuff and you've seen all these different trends. Yeah. Tell me how fashion keeps reviving and re revolving. Yeah, I, I think that you know I always see um, well I think that like a Chanel jacket is something that every girl or some version of it. In fact, in my line I have my version of a Chanel sweater jacket. Every girl needs to have because that's something that never goes out of style. And I recommend someone having something like that. A amazing, um, like crop leather jacket is something I see all the time in, in girls' closets that are yes. great. And the brands that really kind of stay yeah. true are Chanel, um, Hermes, um, Prada, Gucci. These brands that kind of have high resale value. I mean, there's nothing better when someone calls me. Oh, they actually had a call once from a woman from New York. I was in LA. She calls me on the phone. She's like, um, um, "I hear you help people," and so she's whispering. I'm like, "Okay, well, what kind of help do you want?" <laughs> um, I, I hoard Chanel. So literally, you know, you know those commercials, those, those cartoons where the, oh the person like goes so fast, like the Roadrunner. I, I have one apartment in my building that has Chanel and the rest I live in. This is in New York. I'm in LA. I'm on the next flight oh four hours later, like knock, 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 knock. And what do they sell them for to you? I mean, not, I would, I, Chanel is great because basically uh, if a jacket is $2,000, I probably will sell it for um, $1,200 to fourteen, yeah. and they get half. That's a huge it all depends. Yeah, it's those, just, those people don't realize those brands do not go on sale, no. ladies. And if they do go on they sale, don't. it's stuff that is not great. But Chanel, you know, Louis Vuitton, I don't think I've ever seen a Louis, sale in Louis, Chanel. Louis, they do sometimes. Louis, but. never. Louis, never. You know why? They burn all their clothes in the season. Why? Just they to don't keep want it, it. They want. They don't want an aftermarket. They want to keep it sort of in this. In so that all, high level. Can you imagine that bonfire? What about Hermes? Hermes is great. I mean, obviously, it's it's gotten to be so crazy to try to get one of those Birkins or yeah, the Birkins bags, are, you know. And even I think, the belt, it's it's out yeah, of stock, stock for the or past the, or the year. Or the Collier de Chand, they're hard they're to find. Gone. They're very hard to find, and you know, you can buy, find things online. If you want to find someone who's reputable and yeah. you know, really kind of make it happen like that. But I've you know, I've made women. Um, you know, whenever I see a woman who I've dressed, they're always telling me their stories. Like you don't believe, I walked into this party and people could not stop talking about the dress I got from you. Wow. You know, which I, to me, that's the best thing yeah. ever. You know, I've actually helped, I actually saved a woman's life because of fashion. I, um, she's a big publisher here of a magazine in New York, and she bought a pair of Christian Louboutins for me that she loved, a pair of shoes. And she was walking in the street in New York, admiring them, and she fell into a, 
uh, manhole sort of oh construction my. zone. So, you know, she felt a little dizzy, so she decided to go check out everything. She's because of her shoes, but she got to the um, thinking just to look at her knees and stuff. She got to the hospital and they found a tumor in her that she would not have known about oh if she wasn't God. admiring she her shoes. And so they went into surgery and they got the tumor out and she's totally fine now. But if she when she sees me, she gives me a big hug because I saved her life because oh of my shoes. God. Like, so there you go. I mean, you're an angel. <laughs> I don't know about that, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the right way. And you do so much because you are also the ambassador of hope. Yes. And um, the ambassador for Greek American Foundation. Foundation. And it's really, Greg Pappas started this foundation in, in Chicago, and I've become very involved. And I met so many people through him and yeah, uh, what great. I do. And I've, uh, I sold my, parts of my closet um, clothes away. Oh. for, uh, And I, I'll do things throughout the year. I, I was in Chicago last year. I went to the Masquerade Ball. I, I was a featured person in uh, in LA this past year on on, on the big. You know, they had That's you know they had Mickey Mouse in a um, uh, yes and an Evzon outfit. Yes, I know. Oh, it, he, I loved he's it. just yeah. That's never happened before. No. And that's amazing. And no. he does wonderful things. Yeah. And we're big fans uh, with the Gabbies yeah. and everything that Greg is Gabby's doing. Right. We yeah. are, we support and we support all of you guys that Thank are you. doing uh, all. You're representing the Greek community in the United States, and you're so talented, you're so wonderful and, and fabulous, huh. and thank we'd you. like to thank you so much for oh, coming no. here. I thank you. Where can people follow you? Well, um, I am on Twitter, Christos uh, Decades, and, but Instagram's my fun thing. Okay. Christos Garkinos, my whole name, Christos Garkinos, to find me there, and I'll be talking about what's going on. So. Well, we're gonna watch out for everything you're doing, your right, new reality you. show. New reality I'm dying show. to see what I you do. I wanna see your mom and your sister oh, on God. it. God, we're crazy. And we're gonna follow you, Christos. Okay, thank you so much for coming at okay. New Greek TV and Calimera USA. Thank you. Η φυσιοθεραπεία είναι ευθύνη. Απαιτεί επαγγελματισμό και σωστή μέθοδο. Στο Arista Physical Therapy έχουμε αυτό που χρειάζεστε. Επισκεφτείτε τις σύγχρονες εγκαταστάσεις μας και ξεκινήστε άμεσα το πρόγραμμα φυσιοθεραπείας. Οι έμπειροι φυσιοθεραπευτές μας είναι στη διάθεσή σας για να αντιμετωπίσουν τα προβλήματά σας. Παρέχουμε προγράμματα φυσιοθεραπείας, ενεργοθεραπείας, βελονισμού και άλλων μεθόδων ολιστικής προσέγγισης. Arista Physical Therapy. Σας βοηθάμε να απαλλαγείτε από τον πόνο και να νιώσετε πάλι ζωντάνια. Homeric Tours. Πάντα κοντά στην ομογένεια, πάντα με χαμηλότερες τιμές. Homeric Tours. Το γραφείο παράδοση που επί σειρά ετών φροντίζει τον Έλληνα ταξιδιώτη με υπευθυνότητα και του προσφέρει ασφάλεια και άνεση στα ταξίδια του. Homeric Tours. Το Α και το Ω για τα ταξίδια σας. Για πληροφορίες και κρατήσεις θέσεων, τηλεφωνήστε στο 212-753-1100. And welcome back to Calimera USA. We had a lot of wonderful guests on our show today, and we have another great guest. He's on Skype right now from Greece. Since the rise of the Greek economic crisis, many companies develop philanthropic initiatives to give support to the homeland. The Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award is one of these philanthropic initiatives developed by the international group Libra. The Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award was born out of a belief that Greece's economic crisis should not hold back ideas worth pursuing. And they believe that entrepreneurship is the livelihood for economic growth, whether in a healthy economy or a recession. With us today on Skype from Greece to tell us more about the initiative is the director of the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award, Jimmy Athanasopoulos. Jimmy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Nice being with you. Well, we're very happy to have you on our show. You're doing a lot of wonderful things. I'm very excited about uh, your initiative. Tell us a little bit about what prompted this initiative uh, that the Libra Group st said, hey, this is what we want to do. As you clearly said, Yana, first of all, thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, tell the people what we are doing here. Um, uh, as you clearly said, uh, the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award was uh, born out of a belief that the economic malaise, the crisis, shouldn't discourage, shouldn't uh, deter all those people with an idea, with an excellent competitive idea worth pursuing. Uh, and moreover, uh, since entrepreneurship is the lifeblood, not only the heart, but the lifeblood of uh, the Greek economy and the economy in general, uh, we should support all these people. Uh, we in Libra Group believe in uh, human capital, the underlying stre strength of human capital. So we and are here with this initiative to support all these entrepreneurs with the great ideas. And the Greeks are, are, you know, amazing creative people. They have so much talent, so much talent that needs to be discovered. And you guys are doing a great job. Tell me about how someone um, can 
how does it work exactly? So it, do they have to be Greek citizens from Greece? Actually, uh, the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award uh, offers a fair chance to Greece-based entrepreneurs. Uh, the, the requirement here is that the vast majority of the, the people employed should be based domiciled in Greece. There should be uh, a, a company domiciled in Greece as well. But we have a, a perfect example, uh, a last year's uh, award winner uh, called Rabbit, uh, who is the showrunner of this company, is currently has migrated to New York. He's right next to you somewhere over there. We'll find uh, him. <laughs> you surely can. Uh, he will be very well known soon. Uh, this company is called Rabbit. He was last year's award. But uh, these are Greece-based entrepreneurs, Greece-based um, uh, companies, ventures. And uh, the whole concept here is to support the Greek economy as a philanthropic uh, initiative targeting, specifically targeting entrepreneurship in Greece. Who, uh, where do you... The application you... process, uh, sorry to interrupt. Please. The, uh, the application process, since you asked for that one, uh, couldn't have been easier. It, everything is done online. There is a secure uh, online platform. Uh, the uh, interested parties just go and register. So these become uh, registered users. And then they can just go to the application dashboard and plug in their business idea. Shouldn't be a business plan. Uh, a business idea will do, and we'll just uh, uh, ask for some more details if this idea is uh, uh, competitive and uh, very challenging. So uh, the registered user, the entrant, the applicant, has the option of uh, refining, building and refining the business idea. So when uh, he or she is ready to just finalize, and he presses the button, and it comes over to us, and we assess it, we evaluate it. And then uh, the panel of judges, we have a great panel of judges uh, that comprises of uh, prominent people of uh, the uh, business arena, Mr. George Logothetis, uh, Mr. Con Logothetis, George Tamas, Mr. Dimitri Wulandris joined us with 250,000 euros. I should mention here that the Libra Group has committed uh, over 7 million euros for the program, wow. of course. Joined, what is your budget? What is your fiscal? But what is your budget? Seven for the year? million. Uh, this year, we are going to be giving out uh, for funding more than seven hundred, around seven hundred thousand euros, um, from one to one, from one to five uh, winners. So, if there is one winner, it's going to be seven hundred thousand. If it's going to be two winners, it's going to be uh, according to their business plan, summing up to seven hundred thousand. Uh, but so, that's only one of the, uh, the offerings, of the, one of the prizes. Uh, the most important of the prizes is uh, mentoring. A top management, uh, high caliber executive uh, uh, from the Libra group um, will, will be mentoring, will be assigned to be a mentor of each of the winners. So we're going to be matching the, the scope of this uh, new venture with the, the, the CV and the, the experience of this high caliber manager, a managing director of one of Libra Group's company. This is companies. amazing. Uh, and uh, this person is going to be guiding through uh, and strategically helping these people. I, I, I should repeat, uh, this is a mentor, not a manager. Okay. Uh, and there's a third part in this, in this one. The third offering of uh, the third prize of uh, the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award is uh, business support. Uh, Libra Group will offer all those resources required and those expensive resources that are required to, to establish a business like legal advice, accounting, IT, HR, branding, marketing, communication, you name it. Uh, and besides that, we have uh, partners that uh, provide pro bono all these services to the winners. So, as you can see, uh, HEA, the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award, provides all those resources that are required not only to start up a business, but to establish it. You are a one-stop are... shop. You are a one-stop business shop for aspiring new entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurs that want to get their ideas out there. Let me ask you something, Jimmy. What type of uh, business plans have, you, have been submitted? Give us an idea of what are people submitting these days? What type of businesses? Anything you can imagine. Um, we in Libra, as I said... Anything Libra... worth noting. Um, actually, uh, anything I, new, anything innovative? Yes, many ideas from uh, wave energy up to um, innovative culinary art uh, methods. 
Um, hundreds and hundreds of ideas uh, that have hit our inbox. Great ideas showing and uh, uh, demonstrating uh, sustainability because the, the panel of judges will be looking mainly uh, out, of, out for uh, four criteria. But uh, as far as ideas and uh, seg segments and industries, you name it. Anywhere from tourism to energy, uh, high tech to applications and uh, websites, very, very smart, very in innovative ideas. So what are the four criteria that these uh, board members look for before they say, these are the companies we're going to fund? Four criteria. Uh, sustainability. The panel of judges will look for uh, business ideas that are going to be proving that these will be, uh, that they will be uh, excuse me, uh, sustainable throughout their, uh, their scope. We're looking for sustainable businesses. That's one, uh, just one criteria. We need these businesses to uh, be able to create jobs. Uh, financial discipline and prudence is a third um, uh, criteria. And the fourth one is uh, viability. These businesses should be created to exist uh, and uh, maintain and be sustainable throughout their lifetime. Jimmy, this is amazing. And where does one log on so they can apply? www.hellenicaward.com and just to make it a bit more inclusive I should say that we had a lot of entrants coming from the states and not only from the states uh -huh. so if you have people in the states interested in repatriating to Greece opening up a venture and these people are very good at uh, doing this Amazing. they are more than highly encouraged and welcome to do so Jimmy, let me ask you another question. Um, what is the minimum uh, business plan that's submitted? What is the minimum amount of investment that uh, they're supposed to submit and the maximum? Min the minimum is 100,000 euros and the maximum is 700,000 euros for, for this year. Well, congratulations. You guys are doing wonderful work. Uh, congratulations to you, the Libra Group. Now, tell me a little bit about yourself. Your English is, is impeccable. Are you a Greek from the diaspora? Are you, tell us about your I background. I'm a proud Greek American as well. Of course, uh, I'm, I've been living in Greece uh, quite some time now. Uh, I was born and reared in Chicago, Illinois. So I'm Chi -town. a Chi Town. Chi Town. <laughs> Chicago Bull, yeah. Um, so I was born and reared in Chicago. My parents, of course, are Greek. Uh, I'm Greek. I'm Greek American. Uh, currently, I'm living in Greece. I'm very proud to, uh, to have undertaken um, a role in HEA and the Libra Group. Very proud. Uh, and humble uh, by working for the Libra Group. Um, how, is, uh, how is the yes. situation in Greece? How do you see it as a, as a new generation Greek? Uh, the, the course is turning around. We're changing course. Greece is, I think, is uh, um, changing many things. And uh, besides reform, I think uh, the change will not come top down, but the other way. Uh, and this is happening. Because, uh, of course, it's happening the hard way, but it's happening. And uh, this is a miracle because it's happening very fast. We were expecting uh, this to happen in uh, five or ten years, but it's happening. Uh, you see the changes day by day. Reform is there. Yeah. Uh, people uh, are suffering, but Greeks, with their philotimo and their hard work, will change the route. Greeks always prevail, don't they? <laughs> Especially under pressure. Exactly. We work well under pressure. We always pulled it off. Congratulations, guys. Everyone, log on to Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award and submit your business plan and be chosen. Be one of the chosen ones to get your uh, career and new business started and help the community, help the uh, job market, and help yourselves. Log on to www.newgreektv.com for more information about the Hellenic Entrepreneurship Award. Uh, we're going to call Jimmy back again and find out what happened this year. Um, congratulations, Jimmy, and thank you so much for having uh, joined us here on Calimera USA. Calimera, thank you Keep up much. the great work. Well, these are wonderful Greeks doing wonderful things. More people should uh, have these type of initiatives, should develop these type of initiatives. We are all Greeks, we have to stick together. This is the time. Greeks unite, just like the Hellenic Initiative also says, one Greece, one Greek people. Um, thank you for joining us on Calimera USA for this episode and uh, watch out for us again next week.